Nice to meet you, this is the Hobby IT channel. Thank you for watching today. In this channel, it is a video that challenges making things with IT. Programs and circuit diagrams are available on the website below, so please make use of them. Let's have fun together. I would like to do electronic work that acquires images with an IoT camera and saves them in Google Drive. The series was supposed to be completed in four videos, the first being an overview and the second being a Google Cloud setup. This time it will be the third one and it will be hardware. We will actually wire and connect the camera of the microcomputer ESP32 and OV2640 on the breadboard. You may be wondering if we don't manufacture on the base. But if you want to make a large amount of the same thing, I think you'll make a base and commercialize it. This time, it will be a basic confirmation including testing, operation confirmation, and usage, so we will make it on a breadboard. Let's take a quick look at the real thing. This is the ESP32 development board and is a genuine Espresso product. First, we will open it. It was 1,230 yen in Japanese yen, so I think it would be about $10 in US dollars. It's a little higher now. The packing method varies depending on the shop where you bought it, but this time it is packed like this. I will open the bag inside. In this way, the jumper pins are arranged in two rows of 19 pins. Then this is a third-party ESP32 development board. It can be used if it conforms to the legal wireless technical standards of each country. By the way, this is compatible with the technical standards in Japan, so it can be used. The jumper pins are two rows of 15 pins. Other manufacturers also have 19 pin ones, but this is a 15 pin one. As you can see by arranging them side by side, the number of pins is different like this. For normal use, 15 pins are enough, so it doesn't matter which one you use. It is important that the ESP32 meets the legal wireless technical standards of each country. Next is the camera, this is the OV2640 module. Modularized so that ArduCam can connect with jumper pins. The module comes with the necessary resistors and voltage regulators already wired to make the OV2640 easy to use. We will use this module for electronic work. Next is the breadboard. There are 30 rows of 6 holes on two sides, and two rows of plus and ground are wired vertically. We will open it. I'll add a little more about wiring. This shows the front and back sides. As you can see, the six holes are conductive, so the wire inserted in the six holes will be conductive. In addition, all the wires wired to the 24 holes of this plus and minus will be in a conductive state. We will use this continuity for wiring. This hole array differs from most commonly used breadboards. I will explain the reason for using this time. The most common size breadboard is the one on the left. There are 30 rows of 5 holes on two sides, plus 2 rows of positive and ground on two sides. The one in the middle will be used this time. There are usually 5 holes, but this one has 6 holes. So even if you insert the ESP32 development board, There are two rows of empty holes on the left and one row on the right. Wiring can be done by inserting it into this empty hole. If you use this on the ESP32 development board, you can wire on one side, but you can't wire on the other side because there is no empty hole. Therefore, this breadboard cannot be used alone. Also, when using a mini breadboard, there are not enough holes because it has 17 pins.
If it is made by another company, it is possible to insert it because it has 15 pins. However, the other one does not fit. For this reason, I think that it is possible to wire using too many breadboards like this. This time, as explained earlier, we will use this breadboard. Now that we have finished explaining the main components used, let's actually look at the circuit diagram and do the wiring. First, here is the schematic. The LED is not particularly necessary for the camera function, but it is installed to confirm the startup and display the Wi-Fi connection status. First, the LED is wired in series with the resistor. Let's take a look at this part. Regarding the resistance of the LED, the LED used this time has a forward voltage of 2 volts and a forward current of 20 mA. The circuit diagram when using LED is like this. Since the voltage of ESP32 is 3.3 volts, calculate the resistance value with the power supply as 3.3 volts. According to the LED performance, the voltage applied to the LED is fixed at 2 volts. So the voltage applied to the resistor is 3.3 volts minus 2 volts. Also, due to the series connection, the same amount of current flows through both the LED and the resistor, so the value divided by 20 mA is the resistance value. This time it was 65 ohms, but it was too bright to check the condition, so I used 200 ohms. If you use a resistor value that is different from the calculated value, be careful not to use a smaller value as resistors smaller than 65 ohms may damage the LED. Next is the camera wiring. The ESP32 port diagram looks like this. Since the port that can provide a special communication method such as I2C is fixed, the wiring is adapted to that port. It doesn't matter which port you use for normal IO ports. This time, I tried to match the circuit diagram with unit cam of M5 stack. Unit cam will be this product. The circuit diagram is also published on the M5 Stack official website, and you can also purchase it. Now let's do the wiring. As for wiring, first plug the ESP32 development board into the breadboard. Make sure there are empty columns on both sides. This time there are one column on the left and two columns on the right. Next. Wire the ground of the ESP32 main unit to the ground wire of the breadboard. By wiring, you can use the ground wire of the breadboard for wiring, which makes wiring easier. Next, wire the IO4 port of ESP32 to connect the LED. We will wire in the empty space position to connect the resistance etc. next. We will connect the resistor, but the legs are a little long, so cut them. From the IO4 port, Wire the resistor and LED in series according to the circuit diagram. Since the LED has a positive direction and a ground direction, check it carefully and wire it. The ground will be wired to the ground wire of the breadboard that was wired earlier. The wiring is now complete. I made a diagram to make it a little easier to understand, so I will share it. Next, we will wire up the camera. First, attach a jumper wire to the camera module. There are two rows of 10 wires, so separate 10 jumper wires each. I will attach the separated jumper wire to the camera. It's a little long, so I'll skip it. Install the next 10 in the same way. It also flies a little. 
After installing the jumper wires, wire them to the ports of the ESP32 one by one according to the circuit diagram. Look carefully at the circuit diagram and wire the camera port and ESP32 port connection so that there are no mistakes. The camera port type is written in white on the front of the module. The ESP32 port type is also printed in white, so we will wire it up. It's going to be a little long, so I'll skip it too. The wiring will look like this. Wiring is completed here and the hardware is complete. Next is the software program, but please watch the following video as necessary. We will continue to take on the challenge of making things using IT like this, so please give us a high rating and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.